Welcome back to Layla Teachers. Um, today we will be speaking about the WEC output of the heart. I will split this video into three parts again. First we'll speak about the cardiac output, then we'll move on to the Frank Starling mechanism and finally we'll speak a bit about the cardiac WEC. So starting with the first part, uh, the equation of the cardiac output it is equal to the heart rate times the stroke volume. Now the stroke volume is measured in milliliters and the heart rate in beats per minute and so the cardiac output gives us liters per minute. We'll speak about each of them individually now so starting with the heart rate it is established by the sinoatrial node in the right atrium and this is dependent on the autonomic nervous system so the sympathetic nervous system increases it and the parasympathetic nervous system decreases it via muscarinic receptors after that we speak about the stroke volume so stroke volume is dependent on three things so we've got the left ventricle preload then you've got the afterload and finally the contractility And speaking about each one of them, so the preload is the volume of blood entering the chamber during diastole and it is dependent on two things. So first, if you increase the preload, the stroke volume increases, that's what's important, it's directly proportional and it is dependent on the end diastolic pressure and end diastolic volume. Moving on to afterload, it is the aortic pressure or the arterial pressure and if this one increases the stroke volume decreases so it is inversely proportional proportional sorry and finally we speak about the contractility or also known as the inotropy so it is to do with the sarcoplasmic free calcium concentration so we have two types of inotropes uh, which are like stimulants, you've got the positive ones and the negative ones. So the positive inotropes such as epinephrine and norepinephrine increase the cardiac contractility, so which increases the rate of pressure development and the systolic pressure, which is the stroke volume. And then you have the negative inotropes like beta blockers, medicines and calcium channel blockers, which have the opposite effect. Now we move on to the Frank Starling mechanism. And um, the Frank Starling mechanism, also known as the Starling law of the heart, is the ventricle's innate ability to respond to increased preloading with an increased stroke volume. So it's like a compensatory uh, mechanism. So we have two types of changes um, to do with the length of time. So if you've got the short term changes and the long-term changes. So starting with the long-term, it involves um, the management of the car, um, cardiac output through sustained increases in the circulating blood volume So and the preload. So this involves fluid retention by the kidneys. So when more fluid is um, taken up by the kidneys, retrieved, then you have increased blood volume and preload. The short term involves the sympathetic nervous system and it's to do with the veins and the ventricles. So it constricts and forces the blood out of the veins and into the ventricle. As you know, the sympathetic nervous system is acts like a vasoconstrictor. This is um, a graph showing the frank starling relationship and the effect of uh, positive and negative inotropic agents on the mechanism. So we've got the y-axis with the stroke volume of the cardiac output and the x-axis with the end diastolic volume. So the green line would be neg negative inotropic effect, the red one is the positive and the blue one is the control, which is the normal uh, mechanism of the heart. So you can see that 
the positive inotropic effects increase the conductivity of the heart and so the cardiac output is increased and the negative ones decrease it. Now we will speak about the last part of the video which is the cardiac whack. Now the heart performs whack when it moves blood from the veins to the arteries and it performs two kinds of whack. whack. So we have internal and external. The internal one makes up 90% and the external obviously accounts for the rest of the 10%. Um, the internal one is within the heart, um, that's how you can remember it, and it involves isovolumic contractions. So obviously, it's the uh, force necessary to open and close, um, not close, but open the aortic and the pulmonary valves. So, it's about the systole. The external one, on the other hand, is to do with transferring blood to the arterial system against a resistance. So, basically, the rest of the blood supply outside of the heart. I hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.